This is episode 354 of the Golden Squadron Podcast. I'm one of your host, Will, called the Macro, Hegwood. And tonight, I'm joined by Marcel, when do we sleep, Manzano. It feels like I haven't slept since Worlds. It's been, um, it's been a good time, but uh, I'm tired. Ryan, I swear I didn't just write this, Staniszewski. No, uh, I totally wasn't just knee deep in like the rest of the show notes, trying to get a bunch of compiled lists, data, et cetera, together, and just forgot that I had a nickname in the middle to still fill in. I didn't do that at all. No, I've uh, cur- curtain has been uh, veiled, unveiled <laughs> for that. Speaking of behind the curtain, there's a group of people who really are make GSP what it can be. The best of its ability. And that's the Patreons. Whether whether you're a $2 a month, up to our Grand Admirals, we love you so much. They're what gets GSB out to major events, like Worlds. Keeps the lights on, really keeps us going uh, through their help. Uh, if you want to be able to support us, uh, get uh, unique channels on our Discord, shareable art from our past projects, you got to check out Patreon.com slash gold squadron now i have a special exciting announcement to start this episode big headline here we have ourselves a brand new leaked spoiler now i don't know we don't normally do leaks okay but this one this one i'm really excited for i would like to say i was against this as normal but I'm well, the have you seen this card, though? Let's just go to the card from the new Ewok Glider expansion. Chirpa makes his debut in Star Wars X-Wing. He's an Initiative 8 with only one attack dice, but he does, only, he does have a 25-point cost, so maybe that will factor into it. Uh, has uh, Focus and Lock. Uh, as you'd expect, no upgrades on his upgrade bar. But Not after, a lot to upgrade there with just those tiny wings. I mean, I mean, it feels like uh, not a lot to modify there, to be honest with you. Uh, Chirpa, uh, as we researched, was the chieftain of the Ewok village. Has the ability, after you move through an enemy, roll to attack dice. Uh, each enemy you move through takes all hits and crit results. So flies through him, drops the little bon- uh, the little rocks onto him. I think that's very thematic. Yeah, it seems to be right out of the movie, right? You just like they fly, they flow over the ATSDs right. and drop drop the rock bombs on them. Right. Like it it, sure. it it can't it can't it can't shoot, but it can drop it seemingly drop bombs directly on enemies really well. Well, at least Sherpa can. We'll have to see what the other pilots in the expansion are, but. Uh, for now, I mean, this guy's looking pretty good. Uh, and yeah, gets, uh, like a bomb-like effect, an extra way to attack ships. So, I'm pretty excited, like I said. Had had to reveal it. I I do wonder if, like, the other Ewok gliders won't get a shield. Because, like, if Sherpa's supposed to be the, like... That's true. He's probably got the the special one. The chieftain, right? Like, he gets the special one. All others is maybe, like... Like hull only for hull then, if we're to think about what the other yeah, ones could be. Two two agility. Maybe yeah. and then four hull, sure. Could be interesting. We've seen that in the past, of course. So like I said, I just had to get this out. Uh saw it floating around. And like so had to let people know. Uh very excited for that Ewok Lighter expansion. But I'll try our main topic tonight. We are talking more worlds breakdown. That's right. Uh, this that's uh, that's our intro. <laughs> I gotta turn that off. When we cut back, anyways, we are taking a look at more scum. We're gonna break it down. We're hoping to get uh, some of the top players ever. It's amazing in worlds, but some people who placed very high in the elimination rounds to come on tell us their story really give an insight into their faction 
and how to succeed in it. Uh, so right now, we're going to be trimming the fat this episode. Uh, the, the little bit of extras sprinkled in that uh, didn't, didn't quite pull it off. Um, and we are going to start with, of course, the only scum in this top 16. Old Para does it again in a stylus fashion with those painted ships. They are... Uh, well, uh, well, top 16. I was going to say what place they were. Do, what place did uh, Old Para get in Swiss? Uh, in Swiss, he ended at... Uh, let's see, because now let's it's like a reordered based upon the um, the final positioning. <clears throat> uh, and in the top sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, did it, in the top sixteen. By, by, by the rest of his SOS tiebreaker with the other top sixteen players, he finished ninth overall. So that would be the top top sixteen. No, the 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 final number. The second number next to it is uh oh no you're right actually yeah because it, I'm seeing how it's read and we're yeah, looking at world be better here so uh, yeah actually Old Para was ninth in Swiss because I'm seeing Illy the eventual winner was 14th in Swiss and eventually number one. so the left number is the the bracket positioning the right number is the Swiss number because Duncan Howard was one in yeah. the right number so ninth in Swiss I mean impressive to say the least Un unexpected results here from I mean, from scum we all talked about that like or at least i recall mm -hmm. that most of us didn't even have scum or separatists in the top 16 and that if either of them did make top 16 we would have a, a decent discussion about it and here we are old mm -hmm. para it's all your fault <laughs> it's all his fault <laughs> uh let's first here i want to get this out of here so i can edit this faster uh i want to first Take a look at their list before we go too far here. I see that my page is cut off, so let's just move that out of the way. Maybe make it real big so everybody can see it here. All right, I'm messing with it too much now. All right, starting with, I uh, called the Orange Colettes. Uh, this is uh, Mandalorian with Razor Crest. Most likely always hidden false transponder codes. It's the most expensive one and it's very valuable at I-5. So we assume that's probably the only one he ever took, but not necessarily. Uh, is there other options? Overtune, Overtune modulators, yeah. right? It's It's got a lot of red moves and if you could overtune plus contraband. I mean, there's probably a good context to make is the reason why we're saying it's very likely to be false transponder and maybe overtune is because he's already equipped contraband as one of the other options. Yes. And you so can't there's... take two copies of contraband with Razor Crest. You also can't take any uniques. So no cloaking device, no Babu. Uh, probably not going to take feedback array. So like it starts dwindling down uh, very quickly about which ones you yeah. can. Could always be the tail blaster. Yeah, I could, would catch somebody. Could be a big cargo shoot. You never know. Could be. Could be. Unlikely though, from a competitive standpoint. Uh, though possible. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the contraband, contraband cybernetics and the child. Only 10 loadout. Everybody is dismissing Mandalorian for that abysmal loadout compared to what he had at 7 points. But you still get all the things you want. Good elicits and the child. Uh, of course, if you're not familiar with Mandalorian's ability, uh, while you defend or perform an attack, if you are in multiple front arcs of enemy ships at range one to two two or more enemies you may change one of your blanks to a focus result so it doesn't add a focus it converts one more like broadside or advanced optics if you will uh the pretty good ability when you have the child around who's basically two force that can't normally recharge it but has built in mm -hmm. hate yeah so you imagine you you roll either a blanket and evade, right? Or a blanket and a focus. Either way, you're going to suffer a damage, get a new force, and then could potentially just use them for the next defenses. 
Uh, very, very powerful. Uh, after the Q9 Mando, like, nerf, you just be able to have Q9 with Mando and Child, which was, like, the most defensive ship, I think, and, like, as one complete package. Uh, Mandalorian ranks up there as uh, one of the best, even though he doesn't even have Reinforce, which is a bit absurd. Uh, you could next. argue he has better than Reinforce? Ooh. Yes, it, because he yeah, he, he minimum check it out, but he yeah. always blocks a hit. He always puts an evade out to cancel your one attack die. As long as he is in arc at range one to two of more than right. one ship. Yeah, as long that's, as he's proccing that ability. <laughs> well, joust, you know what I mean, or just yep. If they if they want to turn away from him, just target lock and tear it up. You know what I mean. Uh, Mando's gonna go where the where most of the heat is. That's his job. All right. Uh, speaking of heat, throwing some heat is Fen Rao. Of course, is a really uh, a competitive scum list without Fen Rao. He's so good. Uh, gets those extra dice at range one and has Concordia face off, so you get the evade result guaranteed at range one. Though, well, Parz built them a little bit differently. Mando, I think that that could just be a standard loadout, but uh, Fen Rao does have a lot of options. People between. Uh, doing the slamming. Uh, what, what is that? I forget what the, exactly that's called. It's uh, burnout thrusters. Burnout, burnout thrusters. thrusters. Burnout yeah. thrusters. You could go crack shot predator. Uh, really lean into the bullseye. You could be doing Mandalorian optics. Uh, you could put advanced proton torpedoes on them and roll a six dice attack. There's a lot of things you can do with friend Rao. Afterburners as well. Very popular uh, for him. Uh, but Old Para went clan training, Beskar, and Shield. So two very defensive upgrades with Beskar and Shield. And then clan training, which where if you don't need to reposition, you already got that range one, you can throw down the target lock, which is arguably better than Predator, but it's kind of like a one-time use uh ability to acquire that lock because you do need it's a single charge and then you do need to destroy a ship to get it back uh, marcel thoughts on this fen route build i mean <clears throat> I, I mean it's probably the best i'm i'm trying to think what else you would do with fen route um i named off a bunch of them no. you could do <laughs> outmaneuver yeah, technically you can do outmaneuver no, that a lot of people are focusing I mean, on on the offense, and just everyone gets concerned about mm. Fenrir staying alive for six points. Well, Olpar is like, well, I found more ways to keep him alive. Just add shield upgrade. Yeah, is it just doesn't really is clan training also jam protection that you could say be come jammed, take a lock, and then still have a focus for defense. I mean, it could be, but I think more than anything, it's there for. Um... Because you don't have any other way, you don't you don't have fearless, you don't have right. crack shot, you don't have predator, you don't have any other way to modify right. your offense. That's, you know, if you just happen to land at range one, now you can just target lock mm -hmm. and get the uh, target lock focus at range one. Um, sure. So also I, I pretty good for scenarios like scramble if you want to press the button. If that's true, in front of you. that is true. Okay. You could you could tow, you could scramble with clean training. I hadn't thought about it like that. That's true. Yeah, I mean, it sucks that it's only a, a one-time thing, um, for the most oh, part. Just, but yeah, you just gotta kill bullshit. kill the thing in front of you, and then you get it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just shoot but, first um, in your list, though. But still, rolling yeah. five dice. No, I think right now that's the only, that's really what makes the most sense with um, so so many other i six uh, being able to opposite outmaneuver you and shoot you from multiple angles you've got the three initiative six i um uh the three i six at the empire that are flying together and you've just oh, got sure. so many other things that can just catch you off and then you know if, if you, i flew soon like yeah if soon can have like anti-crit in the front and two extra hull uh you know we'd he'd be a worth that extra point <laughs> i would, um, I would, I would tend to agree <laughs> yeah but um 
Yeah, I think I think he built it the best way that you can right now with so many other Ice Six and just um, with only four ships, you got to keep them alive. You, you can't be too aggressive with them because you don't have a lot of other. You, yeah, right. you have some other good tools, but you don't have like a ton of guns. Yeah, there. there's there's that fine line between you got to you got to. He's somehow safest at range one, but you got to make that commitment to dive in to range one to be safe, quote unquote safe. So, uh, I would be interested. I wish we could determine how many games spin round one or was a, was still alive then at the end of it. I would have to assume most, I would assume Mandalorian might be your big target. Um, uh, but maybe it's these other two rogue class starfighters. So six six four four, a classic build in Scum right now. If you're doing four ships, so the other two are Dirge, uh, which is the his is Reverse Bosk. That's all I know it as. He makes two hits, one crit. With yep. other as with long other caveats. As there are... Yeah. If after there's more defending, hits than shields. Uh, after while you defend after neutralize result step, if there is if there are more hit and crit results than your active shield, you may change one hit to a crit and cancel the other hit. Right. So Right. Uh normally it's when they're yeah. out of shields and it's not the initial attack on them, but I mean some initial attacks right now I've... are pretty commonly through three well modded three dice or four dice with, with like I've... proton torpedoes. It's... So I mean that's fair. You I can have do it seen off the rip a, pretty well. I think uh, the last time I fought a dirge, I threw a, a three-hit proton torpedo into him. Or not, yeah, heavy so, or something. Either way, no, it's yeah, common. I, I played against dirge in like round two or something like that, or round three, mm -hmm. and um, he is. It's very annoying. So I ended <laughs> up shooting him with three ships and did one shield. Uh, because he kept yeah. on using, you know, I I would do three damage, and then he would cancel it, cancel one, turn it into a crit, and then evade it two or something like that, right? To the point where he oh, was taking it, zero damage. No, you, you can't, can't take zero. Damage. Zero. That's not. That's a, you, you're. Oh, then it's after neutralized. The judge result. came over, and the judge said, "Yeah, there is zero damage." Mm, no, because you still get a crit result. Because this he is... said. Um, yeah, because th there was two shields. I mm -hmm. landed hit, hit, crit. And he converted two. one of those hits to a crit. Yeah, and so that's two crits. Removed, so you... And then removed a damage. So that left crit, crit. But the right. crit, crit were evaded. No, this is... Mm. This is... What after neutralize result steps. So this should all be yeah, done after the evades well, are taken into account. Then yes, the, the judge, judge might not have might not have understood correctly. He they yeah, might they not didn't... have understood that defense dice. I wonder if I won or lost that game. Good luck. I, I can't. But I um, I can show it a little bit here on on the stream. But it definitely says after neutralized results. Interesting. Okay. Now, so then... yes, what you the situation you are describing that you could potentially your first attack into dirge could just knock off his shields, even though you thought it was a great attack. To me, this is... Well, says... I shot him three times, and he used it, and I only knocked off one shield, and that one shield was from a plasma, because the judge ruled that he evaded everything, but the plasma... The effect? A plasma still had an effect. Like, it was a weird thing. I don't know what so... happened. You should... You... Yeah, so I ended I'm up hitting him with a plasma. Drudge, but... Yeah, but the judge, didn't obviously... Work. Yeah, because I hit him with three shots, and he evaded... Uh, he evaded to the point where I did no damage, even though there was damage, like, after doing, like, the whole thing. Sure, we, so, we understand. Yeah, that, 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 that Dirge doesn't use his ability to not take damage. He uses that ability to take less damage. Okay, right. You then, can... Uh, I think about it as almost like a reinforce, um, kind of, or at least adding an additional evade to it. It kind of reminds me of uh, the... Remember the take a Stress for the third damage droid. Yep. 
No, I, I get what you're saying, and that's the way I understood it as well. Okay. But, um, well, guess, did they have I the guess. same loadout? Do you remember that uh, Old Vera had brought marksmanship, proton cannon, and false transponder codes? Really leaning into that bullseye. And if you can line it up without the reposition to be able to take the target lock, now you have the two crits, a focus mod, and a target lock on that four dice attack. The jam could also be just in general helpful against getting locked against opposing stuff. Because if you think about it, sure. the the rogue chassis has dead to right. So anything in the bullseye can't use focus mod or green green tokens anyway for defense. True. Uh, I wonder if that false transponder codes was mostly a defensive thing, right? Like, oh, Malrus can't just mag pulse me, right? Mm -hmm. If she's the only thing that can lock me, um, or Von Reg can't mag pulse me, right? Or the first Torp coming into me, like Tomax can't just get an easy plasma, right? That type of thing. True. But can still be used somewhat offensive because if you still get the lot, if you get Bullseye and you just land it. Mm -hmm. And you get to lock them. That helps your other friendly ships who do have to chew through their green tokens first normally right. to get rid of them. Yeah, they can't use their focus on Fen Rowan's attack because you have them dead to rights now. And they wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to use it on yours. Still, I mean, that shot for four points is like... Uh, that That's a five or six point ship's attack. Like an opener. So, if you can pull it yeah, off, sure. pretty crazy. Uh, but here, here's the tricksy one. All, all that kind of expected. Those are, it's a very those, weird one. Those are those are uh, top class scum ships. His last one, another four pointer here, another rogue class Cad Bane in the Xanadu blood. Cad Bane, of course, can hand out his bad tokens after he. Uh, successfully hits on his attack. So it's every other turn, but you can hand off the stress from his linked actions or his cl well, it wouldn't be from his cloak, but uh, I guess if you cloaked and then decloaked and anyways, you can hand off uh, red orange tokens normally, stress, which is really cool because you can uh, prevent people from say K turning and following your friend around. Uh, still very impactful. This one brings synced laser cannons. So has a, instead of just their two dice primary, having that three dice at range one, two, and three. Uh, ion bombs. Again, a nice control piece. You're, you're potentially stressing people. You could, now they can't K turn. Now they're ionized because they're behind you from the bomb. Very good debuff ship here. And then if this one, we got to put more debuffs in here. <laughs> so why not March Sable Closure? This is the talent that says after you fully execute a maneuver, if you moved through an obstacle uh, or three other things, a structure, a huge ship, or deployed. Now you're going to cross those out. Moved through an obstacle, which is not overlap, just template touches the obstacle. You may choose an enemy ship in your front arc at range 1 to 2. That ship gains a strain token. So now you're handing out ions, stress, and strains. They well, might be thinking, well, that's a risky upgrade. Sure is. Except for when you have Kira on board, uh, who says you could move and perform. When you move and perform attacks, you ignore obstacles you're locking. On our top 16 game, we saw Cad Bane line up right or right behind a gas cloud. Turn one, moves up, locks it. Boom. Turn two, three banks through it. A bit barely. <laughs> Very close. Uh, maybe uh, if you are doing some sort of Kira things, definitely you know double check your first obstacle. Make sure it's Kira, Kira usable. But move through and then apply the strain right away. Uh, this is... A three-point combination that uh, I've seen, but never never in top 16 of worlds would I have had that on my bingo card was Marge, Save a Closer, and Kira uh, from 
uh, the the scum list there. Um, our stable coach is only smaller medium. Ugh, if you could put it on a Falcon, how cool would that be? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> side arc. I mean, it is front arc, so maybe. That's true. Maybe not. This this cad's just dishing out red tokens. He's just mean. Ball. He's just mean. Right? Like here's like I'm gonna move through a thing. Here's a strain. I'm gonna shoot you. Take my stress. Um, and then and then after you have a stress, um. Good luck getting away from my ion bomb and have some have some uh, ion tokens next turn. Yeah, and so it's I'm... really interesting. Like the the Kira, it's like we we talk about its its synergy with Marge Sable. Like clearly, that's that's a main part of it. But also just when Cad Bane locks that obstacle, um, being able to move through, not taking any of the negative results, uh, and then also being able to shoot. At, at it and ships that are obstructed aren't obstructed anymore mm-hmm. they don't get their defense dice additions so th- there's a few compounding things I think mostly it's the this cad being gets to pick an obstacle on the board it's to say this this obstacle I get to ignore and you have to respect that I have to ignore it so I can, my dial is open around this obstacle basically uh yeah it's you, you try to a lot of the times when players will set up the obstacles, or sorry, they'd set up the objectives, and then you start putting obstacles right in front of objectives to, to try to force your opponent to avoid them. Uh, if they want to go towards the objective, Cad Bane doesn't have that problem. Well, a life of luxury. And Cad Bane uh, being the last ship shooting out of all these three, like, Fen's already a high-powered attack. If they're a giant, so the Proton Cannon, scary attack. If Mando get you know his three die attack, if he's got his ability active, that's a scary attack, well modded too. Um, and if Cad Bane shooting last, there's a good chance most of the defensive tokens have been spent, which means his ability is more likely to land and pass a, something like a stress over from all the linked actions he can do, sure. um, and force them to be able to have a, a Cad Bane's control be more active throughout the game. Yeah, and that uh, kind of debuff or control aspect is something that elevates scum uh, I, more than the, the sum of their parts. Uh, it's very similar to like what, uh, what FO was, has been leaning into with their chaff missiles and the jamming from the whispers. Not so much chaff missiles anymore, but uh, you understand what I'm trying to say. So it is refreshing i guess to see that scum still leaning into those tricks and that's what makes them successful the false transponder codes the bad the debuff tokens ionization uh handing out strain strain and stress uh those are the crafty tricks you have to do to be able to outfly your opponent yeah and they're not the thing about them is these particular trips tricks and how they're being applied to the opponent um they're not so easily triggered or or, uh unstoppable in a manner that would be oppressive to your opponent it's effective it really good is what it does but it's not impossible to handle your opponent does have some these kind of agency in handling and this is like this is kind of the level of scum quote trick tricks Mm -hmm. that i think is like acceptable in in my eyes and how the game is um there could be some other ways to do it but the heightened level of it feels like it doesn't put opponents in like unplayable situations but it's also enough to still affect the game in a strong manner i I would agree with that a lot of these are limited use as well uh cad bane's every other turn the false transponder codes are once uh the uh, the Iron Bombs are twice. And Mars Sable is probably once. So let's be real here. But if you get a second one off, I think that's on your opponent. <laughs> to be honest with you. But the... Uh, yeah, I would tend to agree. Uh, that's You got to leverage those resources, right? Uh, well, let's take a look then. And what, what do you want to do next, actually, Ryan? I'll... I'll, I'll uh, well, I guess to, to, help, to help clarify... Um... 
For people who may want to test out this list themselves, uh, Old Para opted for his obstacle choice for three gas clouds. And if you look at them on Yasby, they're numbers four, five, and six, basically the three newest ones. Um, uh, we don't have a particular known reason as to why he chose those, other than the potential of breaking locks. It's not going to affect Mandalorian that much. Um, Cad Bane could move through one that he doesn't have Kira locked, pick up a strain, and then shoot someone to pass it off if he doesn't have, already have a shot off of him. Uh, those type of things. Um, Ion might not be super detrimental to the rogue. They would actually get access to a one straight, and they already have the one bank. It may not be what they want to do, but... Um, and then also having stuff get ion bombed to then go into more ion clouds that have a chance to ion them still could lock them in ion jail for way longer than the, they were hoping to. Yeah. Um, Did you say the Razor Crest as well? Razor Crest want, getting one banks to clear stress. Oh, true. Yeah. I mean, that one required to rolling a crit on the ion cloud uh, versus. Uh, that's true. Is it, that's true. Because it only stitches out one. Yeah, it only gets one. Maybe not the risk you're willing to take. You need a little Cad Bane in there. Or actually, no, not Cad Bane. What is it? Um, that Dace, but I think Dace... Dace bone arm. Uh, Dace. Dace is not... Uh, Dace is enemy only, unfortunately. Oh, uh, that would be... That, that's I know. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a good way to... The last, like, okay, now you get a bank. I think we saw uh, the uh, a, a, another scum squad that was two fangs, Dace, two Y-wings, and Bosk, so a six ship, four, 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 three, three, two. And uh, some, I forget what it was in that game that we were watching from. Uh, and we thought it would be hilarious to uh, use Ace on friendlies, but no. You, okay, not. I think it's overall probably like, I think the Cad Bane was, had been decently key if he was handing out stress to opposing ships to help Mando not be in spots where he gets turned around on. Um, mm -hmm. As we talked about, his his dial's like not the greatest, um, especially for yeah. clearing stress. It's really good to tell your opponent they have to respect the zero stop or the 5k. Like That's a very dangerous turn. Um, but, beyond, but after you've done a red move, better be right that you can still move forward or be okay staying stressed and uh still find a yeah. target if you're the mando player yeah so you're... but if cad Bane, if cad Bane's handing out those those debuff tokens or i whether it's by the stress from his ability to hit and give uh one of those tokens to his opponent or the ion bomb hitting that can help corral opposing ships for mandalorian to easily find better and also fen route too once as you guys know have played fangs uh once a fang gets stressed they kind of a very predictable flight pattern unless they uh disengage for a turn or two yeah hard to boost maybe a bear roll if you're in close quarters but yeah it, the decision tree gets pretty narrow at a certain point uh maybe fen Rao can like hard one to like avoid an obstacle and stay range one of someone he's defending and attacking against, but it's it's a lot more rare, to say the least. I'd say uh Olpara, if you're if you get the chance to listen to this, uh if you would respond near the GSP Discord or YouTube comments uh on this episode and what what piece really became the unsung hero or any other things you wanted to add to this um discussion overall. But uh, I think we probably move into his, his path to the top 16, right? Because the question a mm -hmm. lot of it becomes, to what did he end up facing? Like, what, what worked? What didn't work? What scenarios? Were there any trends? What patterns? Etc. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you have up on screen right now. Yep. Taking so... a look at their tournament sum rate. Uh, but we got to yep. reference this with, uh, with scenarios because that, that is an important factor in the list matchups. Uh, but I think you had those all prepared already? Yes. Uh, I have the list of the rounds and what scenario was played on those rounds. On top of just the basic, did he win or lose, and then versus what. Um, it's very interesting to see... See, he started off day one going three and two 
uh, it pretty much like made it on the almost baseline level to make it into day two of worlds. He won his first two games, both for Empire. First one was salvage. Second one was scramble. He lost his second game against an FO list for Kester Smith in chance. Um, and won assault against Quarantine, who had re- who had recently won with the exact same list, I believe, at Sith Taker Open. So that that was probably a pretty tough game. Um, and then lost again to FO in the fifth round in Salvage. So two losses on day one were both to first order, but won his other three games against Empire. So only faced two factions the entire day one of Swiss. Won against all of Empire, lost against all of First Order. And then we flip the script into day two of Worlds on Saturday. He trucked through every single opponent, won every single. He had to win every single game otherwise, or at least uh, the lowest seed, the lowest record we saw in top 16 was a seven win, one tie, two losses. Uh, But he trucked through and won every single one of his games on Saturday. Four resistance lists in a row, starting from round six all the way to round nine which would be scramble assault chance and assault again because we had completed the cycle before that us uh, uh second or third assault at that point in there and then round 10 he won a game against um against rebels so didn't again only face two factions uh obviously one of them four times being resistance and then another one being rebel Potentially, I mean, within that bracket, he was eliminating resistance players by by those victories, right? Because at that point, all those other players were two losses. Mm-hmm. So just chopping uh, yeah, resistance on day off two. the block all the way <laughs> through. Yep. Mm. With where'd all the resistance go? And just like they're either getting chopped up from from their own matchups against each other, or apparently by Old Para. Uh, not all of yeah. them were five ship resistance. Well. Not all of them were the, what I would call the standard five ship resistance. <laughs> I was going to say they're all five um, ship resistance, actually. They're all but, five yeah. ship. There, there was a Falcon version there with two Y wings and two X wings. There was a two X pod X and a Y wing, three X, two Y, and then five X. Those were all of the variations he fought. So not a consistent type, a... but he consistently beat them. Is that a Chewbacca then to get the two um, Y wings? Four, oh, four, scroll, six. Scroll down and take that's a look a here on Falcon. his round by round. Unless they, so got, a, rounds, unless they got a two pointer uh, Y wing. Yep, it was Chewbacca. Chewbacca, oh. Elo, Snap, Shara, oh. or Shaza, and Lega. In what round? Round seven. Round yep, seven. you can scroll down. Versus old Jester. Uh, okay. Uh, that That is a uh, Resistance 5 ship squad. Yep. Round six, the other was uh, that was trigger happy bow, the seven pointer with BB eight, L O Temin, and then Shaza Y Wing. And then we go to Wow. I think this was it says Doc. I think this was Dom Flanagan, I think, in round eight, because this looks like the exact list I played against Dom Flanagan as well in day one. He uh tried yeah, some he's other doing things Commander, around. I believe. Commander yep. with the two Ys. Yep, commander with the two Ys, both with concussion bombs. Yeah, so eliminated Dom unfortunately at that point, and then had faced off against the the five resistance, all T seventy, Elo, Tem, and Jess, Karakun, and Mimi. I'm sure I'm sure his eyes rolled so hard when he saw <laughs> his last opponent. He was like, "Oh, okay. Well, I got through the weird ones. At least this this is a little bit more standard." Not easier, uh, by any means. Yeah, it's like another tricks. resistance. Well, I mean, they're willing to jest, yeah. right? It definitely he... seems like. I mean, based on the results, Olpara seemed to do obviously really well against resistance and Empire, and only had one other game against Rebel. But again, uh, Olpara, if you wanted to add in what you like to see with your list, because uh, we only know based on the results we see from Worlds, which. Technically small, small, but high quality sample, high quality in terms of like, you know, the play, the event, very big, lots of high quality player type of thing. Interesting. And then yeah. Will, I, did you get to cast the stream game of his top 16? Yes. 
Um, okay, why don't you talk about that? Yes. He... Uh, oh, was it the top 16? No, I think we... You had I, I I I remember he was he was on the team. Yeah yeah he's, yeah 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 that's right that's he was right. There for the top sixteen, and then I think he also he also streamed them against one of the uh, empire lists as well. No, I think no, I we never. Did we? Yeah. Uh, you did. Caleb it would have been day. It. it would have been day one if you had him on, because uh, he, he his like empire was only day one. To be fair, it was a long weekend. <laughs> so. Sure. I think you're more likely to remember the top 16. We definitely had him in top 16. Yes, because Chris was like, hey, we haven't done the matchups yet, but is there... And we're like, the scum list. (laughs) Before he could even finish. We're like, whatever it is, give us the scum. Don't even care what the matchup is. Just, we want to see that. We want to see Old Faro one last time. Uh, Granted, we didn't didn't discount him, but we didn't want to see his... his, If if he was the eventual champion, we wanted to see his run. We wanted to get multiple videos of him in there so uh yeah we from what i remember he was just blasting uh arcs left and right and then eventually uh succumbed to the amount of damage he needed to get um actually i think at some point friend friend Rao got uh hit uh, by something nasty and had to fly off uh, he couldn't turn back around to the fight. And I think that's really what cost him the game. Is Fenral really came in for one big attack. Did it. Destroyed the arc. But then kind of left everybody else behind him. As he evacuated uh, to safety. I forget if it was a bad crit. Or if he was like on one hull or something like that. But I just know that he, he was not having it. And I think. I want to say that. One of the arcs slipped away, like uh, they destroyed one, and then one slipped away, and then that one that slipped away found Fen Rao at range two, and uh, took him out. If I'm remembering that game correctly, I'll have to rewatch it on either Twitch or YouTube. Be look on the lookout for those YouTube videos coming soon. But the Marcel, what do you think the correlation is between? So it's very clearly broken down by faction. Good against uh, the resistance X wings. Good against Imperials, whether it's uh, bombers or beef of some sort. Mm-hmm. Uh, but bad against FO specifically. Well, uh, Kester Smith is flying Triple Whisper, which is Wraith Wrath. Wraith, whatever one, doesn't have an eye. And then Nightfall with uh, Gaelic and uh, Malaris, of course. Yeah. And another Three one lo- looks to be Von Reg, uh, LaHughes, Kylo, and then the two, two three pointers. Yeah. Three pointers. Uh, pretty standard FO list building there. 55433. Five, three. Pretty you easy know, honestly, to build. A I list. Don't, uh, I. I just looking at this, I think more than anything, it's um, the element of surprise. So I, I think it's again not to downplay um, Nasia's ability, but I also think a lot of it has to do with that choice that you make, that mathematics that you make at the beginning of the game, and you're mm-hmm. and especially with the resistance. You're like, yeah, I can probably outlast this. Just point everything at at it and shoot it and kill it and outlast it so that's and also in doing so that 5k turn uh, um with the contraband cybernetic that that 5k turn goes really far and if you're doing that at initiative five against you know initiative threes and fours t70s Man. uh they're going to be out of position and you're just going to be chasing them down for a while um so i i, th- I think a lot of it has to do with just bad, bad mathematics on the right. opponent's parts, um, and against something like uh, Quarantine's list, I, I genuinely don't know. I mean, I, I uh, that, that's oh, yeah, a decimator. I have no idea. How, I have 
no idea how Corotons list would be able to do damage against most of the. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's probably that it's it's not it's not putting out enough damage. The Tie Fighters are probably rolling one or two hits, and they're getting popped by by either the the proton the proton bullseye thing that they can't mm -hmm. use their 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 green tokens on. Um, also. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the reinforce doesn't work if you've got the bulls out dead to rights, right? Correct. Dead Correct. to rights do, does not allow the reinforce to work. On yeah. top of the fact that, if we, as we mentioned, it's very likely Mando brought false transponder codes. We know Dirge did. So, like, if if he got road roll well and gets to just lock uh, rack, like is, is player two on the main engagement turn lock rack so rack doesn't have a reinforce for any shot anyway and or tomax doesn't get to fire a plasma torp mm -hmm. I, I would have to agree that these these two rack matchups they're going to be hesitant to join the the joust with the rest of the ships right you're going to try to sneak your decimator around at least a little bit you can't just yeah. line up across some dirge and hope for the best there and those TIE Fighters don't have the target lock action to force the false transponder code. Right. So, yeah. Um, True. Yeah, I, don't, I, I think more than anything, it's probably that is just uh, people calculating that they're going to be able to out-joust out joust right. and find out that they can't. Right. Um, or at least they go at Mando and they don't, like, they haven't done the math to realize how much damage Mando mitigates. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the resistance stuff went, yeah, well, let's go kill Mando. And then they're like, I thought Mando should have died there where he super wasn't supposed to die at all. Right. He lines up against three T-70s and you're like, oh, yeah, let's go, Mando. You think you can handle this? And we're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They're doing either zero or one damage at most per shot. So he's taking. If he's got his ability damage. active and a yeah. focus token. He well, should, he he should only take charges from the child. He's probably right. taking one per shot. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. At, at most, maybe one or none. And then, like, if if it's range controlled well enough by Old Para, he gets to maybe five k behind them, and they're like, "Well, now what?" Yeah, unless you're Doza or Elo, you got to make some real choices all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah, and and that that uh multiple just every round being able to roll five dice range one, um. Against the T-70s, they are also predictable, so Fen Rao knows where they're going to be, and it's just like, okay, you're going to eat five dice and probably mm -hmm. die pretty quickly. Um, Fen Rao sure. and Dirge can kill a T-70 in one round. I, I am uh, surprised, though, in the Resistance, uh, faced five Y-Rings and a Falcon, and Chewbacca... Do you know if it's notorious Chewbacca? Because then he might be going front. No, back. it it was a trick shot. Oh, so definitely go inside arc then. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, being able to still leverage Finn in those uh, engagements where you have bombs, you have to look out for. You have that that Falcon turret in addition to the extra numbers as well. So maybe well, I, I think old, old Par has been playing Fen Rao since he like came out. In first edition yeah so um, now, i've seen a few turrets consistently right. so he's he's probably very familiar with the things fenrao doesn't want to see and how to play around so that's you know, true it's, it's not like the like the y wings only drop a bomb normally backwards so as long as you know how to attack on certain angles to minimize that or know when to turn away to not fall for the trap to turn after then it should be okay because then those y wings aren't doing real damage to fenrao as long as they're ripping a T-70 off the board pretty early, that'll severely hamper the damage incoming on the rest of the scum list. Yeah, that's true. I never really thought about how, from like a pure like dial and action standpoint, rogue class are just kind of fang fighters without the hard two. I think the rogues actually have a faster straight blue, right? They have four straight blue. Yeah, they have a four straight blue. Bangs only have three straight blue. Do they have one and two bank blues? They do. Yes. Okay. okay. They just don't have the turns. Just yeah, don't have the, the turn. But as far as like positioning and like, like flight patterns, it's going to be similar to a fang, which 
I agree. I remember old Para showing up with the uh, the old uh, Paratani or whatever it used to be called, uh, which uh, of course had Bang Fighters in it. So, turns out it does take years of practice and skills uh, to uh, be able to compete at such a high level. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of praise for that. Uh, yeah, I would be interested to see if. Uh, how their run would have been had they faced more of these arcs or what what faction didn't they face rebels uh, no they faced uh no para faced rebels once uh he i mean faced, that's really it, he, i mean didn't face separatists but a lot of people didn't face separatists now in fact I, I think unfortunately. I, I i think just the fact of facing rebel and Republic once is mm. at least noteworthy in that regard. Okay. As we said, he, tra he he beat every empire he saw, which was three. Uh -huh. Beat every resistance he saw, which was four. And he lost both FO games, but then won the other, won the Rebel game and lost the, the Republic game in the cut. Makes sense. And the and, and sense. both the rebel and the both the one offs, the rebel republic were like one was round ten, so basically the winning in, and the other was top sixteen cut, so both were strong positioned players in lists. Yeah, that's a stressful. That's a stressful day too. My heart goes out to him. Uh, that every match all day is uh, winner in, or win winner winner not in, either way. A bubble match, if you will, uh, to be able to get to day three. Had to go undefeated all day two. That's an impressive feat. Uh, that's, again, where that practice and, uh, what do I want to say, um, reps. Well, I guess that's, that's still practice, but uh, in the endurance factor of X-Wing starts to set in. Start getting sloppy. Start making bad choices on deployment or target priorities. And um, a veteran player can uh, push through those challenges. Uh, anything else uh, you want to talk about for matchups? I got so distracted on. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, uh, I think until maybe we hear some stuff about. I mean, so I guess here's a good question for us, as I think we're probably done with the matchups and the overall world's summary run from Ulpara, but uh, as a X-Wing player that we all are, all three of us and may, the people joining us on Twitch right now too, um, how interested on a scale of 1 to 10 are you in trying this list out? Me? I am maybe a 1. I'm actually flying a lot of scum and even in a um, uh, I'm we're starting a, a team tournament in like two weeks and, and I have scum as my faction. There you go. And, and yeah, and uh I have zero interest in flying. <laughs> uh, I've got um lists that I've actually I played one today, um, that uses a couple of the same tools he's got, but I've got zero interest in flying Mandalorian. The other ships are fine. Mando, that one. I was going to say. And you got the reverse say. I do. The Mandalorian being in there is one of the reasons I, I would want to actually play this. Yes. I'm, I'm, Scum, is, Scum is like the yes. lowest of my totem pool of interest factions for me right now. And it has been since I've actually sold off some of my Scum stuff to other players. So, um, uh, But I would definitely throw this up on TTS and try it out as is. That's the one thing I, I would highly recommend to everyone. I know first thing everyone loves to do is put their spin or twist or tweak things about a list. Before you do that, especially when it's coming from someone who has probably fine-tuned this list leading all the way up to Worlds, Ulpar is a very experienced scum player. And on top of that, you don't yet have that experience or may not have played scum in a while. Play it as is for a lot more games before you make tweaks and then find out along the way what might work better for you or what works in some matchups and see if those work. But I would highly recommend trying it as is, no adjustments first, see how it runs. 
I would put this on a scale of six to me, and that's mostly because I'm not too interested in Scum as a faction, but I think it is a really cool list, as a lot of the pilots I would like to fly in Scum, especially the Mandalorian. Uh, I'm working this one pretty high. I was so enough that uh, uh, my, my Razor Crest is out of its box, uh, and this, I've been trying to fly it in person. I love the model. Want to see it on the table more. And I think this just gave me my excuse to get the Rogue Class expansion. I was like, oh, do you really need to? But, you know, might as well. Might as well. So I'm excited. Uh, I didn't realize that there were two different paint jobs in the, uh, in the yeah. Rogue Class. Are the Differentiate Z95s? them off the bat for you. Are the Z95s different in the double Z95s? They are Z95s? not. No. I don't think well, they're so. military vehicles, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to fly. Like I said, give me a reason uh, to go out and get some rogues. And I'm already trying to get that Mandalorian on the table. Mm -hmm. So, uh, moving on from that, we're going to be looking at, our, at what Ryan has called first order bubbles bursted uh can yep. you give us a breakdown on this next or uh, some information on this next segment as i pull up these lists here so overall we saw that uh we've all kind of agreed the the five main factions going into worlds that we assumed would have some presence in the top brackets would be empire rebels resistance republic and first order only one of those five did not make cut, and that's the first order. That's why, aka, uh, especially for people who are enjoying the uh, NCAA basketball bracket, the March Madness, the term uh, uh, bubbles or on the bubble is commonly used before they make the brackets finalized, and the bubbles were bursted for the FO. They did not make it into the top 16 cut at all. Um, but they did have some pretty close ones. Uh, they have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them were seven, zero, oh, and three. Seven wins, three losses. And funny enough, all of those were within the final rankings between 21 and 31. Very tight amount. So those seven were all within only three uh, out of that 10 bracket group of 21 to 31 of final placing were not fo um which means a lot of their uh losses kind of ended up in the same region um only one of these players uh didn't have a game loss in round nine or ten which makes sense as their strength of schedule if it's all around the same range they would theoretically have the same round brackets that they ended up losing in generating a similar strength of schedule for who they fought um and then uh will when you have it up um we can go by the the names that you have available to you since you have more of the admin rights to see the real names so we don't have to guess who these players are by the 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 username um some of them aren't so like you got some some uh recognizable names uh doug howe fawn Longalon. there's a jack johnson there a marcin my there Kester Smith, who was actually one of Old Para's losses in Swiss as well. The Mr. Triple Whisper. I lost to Kester as well in a very close assault game. I lost it. I lost to him this weekend in the league match. Ah, uh, gotcha. Is so, he, so he but, is an NCS. But it, yes, but it was a it was classic situation. I built a list uh, minutes before the match. And <laughs> he comes in with his custom painted world squad. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, well, I'll feel <laughs> battle ready. all of a sudden. <laughs> he knows everything there is to know. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he made it to the to the to the rape crabs listening. Theorized amongst the weak, but only actually did the list the 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 real work moments before. Basically, I didn't bring a decimator uh, when I heard I was facing Vefo. And Kester Smith, so. Yeah, uh, probably not a good idea. <laughs> not a good idea. Literally anything but that. Uh, anyways, here I do have... I was trying to make this shot a little bit better, but... 
I think this is uh, this is good as she's gonna get here. Let's go over to that so I can stop messing with that. And uh, this is the first one I had uh, pulled up in your uh, list. I think these are in order. Yes. Uh, this is uh, fruit cake bat. Who also I'm not familiar with that moniker either. What was her overall placing? Do you have that notated down? Uh, well, probably 21st. 21 through 31. Yeah, I was yep. going to say, I, I guess fruit, you have the range. He's the top so. one, fruit, fruit cake bat is 21st overall. Uh, it's Greg Squire. Big shout out to Greg Squire. Uh, for getting that 21st spot. Um, honestly, any, all of these players, even though we're talking we're talking of the, the, the non-top cut or whatever, um, there's 300 people in this event. So anywhere, anywhere near the top uh, is... Uh, an amazing accomplishment. We do do not want to undersell that these are like, oh, these lists are didn't didn't make top cut, so probably not good. Um, it's probably pretty good. Let's take a look at the first one here. Greg Squad, uh, five ship fo. Von Reg as his five pointer. Kylo as his other five pointer. Got Lahue's Midnight and Malaris. How many mag pulses are we looking at? Uh, one on Von Reg, one on Malaris, Kylo, utilizing concussion missiles, advanced optics, and sync to Vam. Love that combination. You don't get Predator anymore, which is kind of sad, but uh, you do get Brilliant. And then LaHughes with Barrage Rockets, and Midnight with Predator and Crackshot. So, leaning into the munitions, but also uh, the, the jams from Kylo and the two Magpulse Warheads for this squad classic list building here with that yeah, five is, five four three three yeah very very we talked about this as like one of the main archetypes in fo showed up plenty and this is very i think the the least standard thing about this is probably the talent choice with von reg opting for elusive instead of people who may go like lone wolf marksmanship or crack shot so opted to allow Von Reich to stay close to his friends while still getting a defensive only reroll until he does another red move to get that charge back. But everything else is very similar loadout that we've seen and pilot composition. I wonder um, if he just no. really loves that big 5k or or what to you because like grab a grab a shield from Deuterium, throw in a big 5k. Get out of the fight for a round. Come back in strong the following round with uh, an extra shield and elusive. Yeah. That's definitely an option. Um, to note, um, I'm starting to compile specifically where all the losses ended up because there were some people in chat wondering, oh, well, what was the round that... If they're all kind of grouped in the similar right. spot, what round seemed to be the killer round? Uh, to note for Greg here, for Kick Bat, his losses ended up in round five in Salvage. Round eight in chance and round nine in assault. So no same scenario. Yeah. Um, those losses did come to uh Republic, uh Rebel, and Republic. Uh I mean losing to Republic in assault round nine, like us. Uh, that's a tough way to lose your tournament or lose your ability to progress in your tournament yeah uh that's yeah, the, that's kind like... of what i was assuming is the round seven assault i think i said that earlier but round seven assault round eight chance and then back to assault for round nine uh these first order struggle i think in assault they don't they don't have any medium bases unless they're destroying ships it's very difficult to control those yeah. objectives a little, a little bit of cannibalization here actually too because uh fruit cake bad okay greg won in round six and seven against two other fo players that are on this list that i have here so oh. okay uh beat i mean maybe one of the reasons why this is one of the top other fo players that finished close to the cut um ended up cu cutting through some of his own fo buddies along the way unfortunately uh, interesting there was a, I, I don't know about uh you marcel 
or what you saw around you or will what you saw in some of your streams when you're walking around. But I know I played a decent amount of mirror match style or same faction matchups in in resistance. And it sounded like FO players might have done that a little bit too. I mean, you're bound to have some mirrors, but there felt like to be a higher prevalence of them on day two for FO and resistance, it seemed. Yeah, I'm not sure if like, cause you don't you don't get paired up by like strength of schedule, just your record in general. Uh, so I'm not really sure the correlation. I know like a lot of I think it was rebels as well. Uh, in day two, cannibalized each other, had to fight each other, uh, which is why we surprisingly didn't see a lot of them in the top cut, or not as many as we expected, anyways. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense of why, especially the the concentration of them at that seven and three uh could have uh that that factor as well to where they just couldn't couldn't get past each other because they kept having to run in uh, to the same people uh, but very impressive run for uh greg here we're going to look at uh caster smith uh this is uh, as we explained before triple whisper nightfall wrath kylo Malaris Gaelic, so all fives except for Nightfall. And they're leaning into Pattern Analyzer. Whoever taught Kester that you can take two actions when you K-turn. Uh, the, the reposition or that focus jam uh, with the Enhanced Jamming Suite must have really inspired him. Because he's Isn't that, the- uh, what, Crispy been flying? Or is very close to it at League? Because uh, he had... Uh- Nightfall. Crispy did not have any whispers in his current list, but when he no, did no, no, fly he was... Kylo before, he did like the pattern analyzer version. Yeah, like at Gen Con, mm-hmm. he had uh, Kylo, Wrath, both of them with pattern, and basically yeah. flying this. I think this, uh, this he is didn't like have the... Nightfall. He had a four ship because he also had like uh, Von Reg and Hollow or something right, like that. Right. This um, is like the Wrath build. Uh, Predator, Marksmanship, Ion, Cannon, Pattern. Wrath needs a, a red token to fire their bullseye as a bonus attack. Uh, so, pretty easy to get a red token while you're K-turning. Uh, red or orange token, so whether you can jam yourself, I guess. But pretty easy to do that while you're K-turning. Plus, because Pattern Analyzer gives you an action now you could reposition an i5 find that bullseye and even jam the tar- one of the targets you're about to attack uh and it just it packs a lot of offense uh, between the the if you're lining up those bullseye bonus attacks uh, but they have what five four and uh three sloops plus like i said uh, the options for repositions after those so I don't think I've seen a, a Wrath built not like this in quite a while. It's very, very good. So, uh, un- unsurprised to see it uh, it here. Uh, but yeah, no, no missile on Kylo. Just leaning into that. Coming in close and pattern analyzing. Like I said, I got a chance to play them uh, this week. Very aggressive with their I-5 whispers. They know they need to dive in to into range one. Get the jam and then K turn behind the ship that they jammed. So uh, it's kind of like that friend row where you know it's knife edge where you gotta really gotta plan your engagement uh, to uh, get the uh, right positioning for it. Yeah, when I faced Kester, um, we were playing an assault and uh, he put. Kylo, Wrath, and Gaelic together and rushed my Lulo that was meant to be uh, more on a bait situation. And there was some road of uh, things we both had to consider in our movements. And uh, inst- I wanted Lulo to shoot up the side of the board after he tried to close in on me. And I, I kept saving my defense token, being a focus or evade, for his ion cannon shot from Wrath because if I wanted to like split and leave with a fast move i'd rather take damage from like a like a a, maybe a one or two damage from a gaelic shot or a kylo shot versus actually getting ioned so 
Uh, but but the way I position myself, a little cut back up in the middle of the board versus up the side towards his back corner assault objective, while all my four T70s tried to handle um, Nightfall being just as Kate. Basically, our Nightfall, his Nightfall and my Lulo were like both being KG in corners a little bit. Uh, his Malrus came up in the middle a little bit, and my four T70s tried to occupy the three main uh, triangle zones that I created for assault. And it was in my favor a little bit. We both lost, I lost Lulo and he lost Nightfall in the same turns. And then uh, he was able to kill a T70, whereas I wasn't able to finish off really another ship since I was prioritizing holding zones and was uh, a little more difficult to get more guns back on target for me. So that's how he was able to pull out the win. Very close game, fun time. Uh, what what about his record? Is is uh, opponents that he faced? Anything stick out to you there? Uh, again, got twenty second place. Very impressive. Yep. Uh, so his losses all came in one giant block. He won his first four games, including beating Old Par, as we talked about before. Mm -hmm. uh, his other three what wins leading up to that. Yeah. He beat Empire. He beat a double ghost rebel. There's uh, a couple flying around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he beat Alpara. Then he beat uh, Rebel, 2X, Fang, Z95, and a TIE Fighter. And then three losses in a row. So round five, six, and seven. Uh, lost to Rebel, 2B, XA, TIE Fighter. Lost to uh, a Rack. Uh, Empire based five ship list with Farov, then lost actually lost to two eventual top 16 players, being one being uh, Jonathan Grasser, who was that first Empire loss. His second Empire loss, being his third loss overall, was against Jeremy Chambly, who you guys had on stream. I know you did in his right. top eight matchup with the Jen and Rack two SL right. Bombers. So and then Kester ended up winning three games in a row one Rebel, My Resistance, and another Rebel. Okay. So, I mean, prompts to him to finish the day strong. I mean, there, the math supported a 7-3. and three. I don't know if uh, with draws, I don't think any 7-0-3s got into the top cut. Do you no, know? yeah, it was all 7-1-2s that ended mm -hmm. up making it. Not all the 7-1-2s, but out of the 7 wins, it had to be a 7-1-2. Right, yeah, exactly. You needed something more than... You're just seven wins, which uh, props to them for a finish of the day strong. Fighting over that top of O. Uh, lost by one one uh, position. So, uh, heart, heartfelt losses, but you know what? Came into play. Ten games yep. and did. And this, so, I mean, besides, obviously, playing against players who are very good. What out of those... Uh, list do you think helped them or hurt Kester's chances of victory? Oh, I mean, like Jen, out of his losses, what? Yeah, what, like uh, Jen, Jen did not get seed. Jen being a hard thing to lock down and jam. I'm very fast. It's weird because he won, he won his first game of the event that included a rack or at least a decimator. But then his other two, two of his other losses were against the other, only other two times he played Empire. Those both had rack. You would think, right, right with three whispers, that that rack would never be allowed to have a reinforce, um, which may be true, but also they need to still do damage enough to bring rack down. Right. And uh, maybe the, the damage incoming from stuff that wasn't rack, or maybe even was still from rack, was just too much to handle. If those whispers are doing repositions into jams, they don't have green tokens to mitigate that free Vader damage, right? From rack, from Vader crew on rack. That's true. So it's not be the easiest thing to do, right? You ideally want to just be able to focus jam. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. One one Darth Vader, one good Jenden shot, and a, like a range one from rack, and you could just lose a whisper, even if it's Kylo. No, oh, so. even if it's like. Uh, just the rack damage, and then if a death fire is throwing a bomb out, you have to be very careful mm -hmm. of that. I think rack would very well take one shield from a proton bomb if it's one damage on two or three whispers around rack. Sure. 
And then on top of that, if if Tomax is coming in with a plasma and there's still a shield left on one yeah. of those, or even if there's not a shield, just three health, like that's a really well modded shot from Tomax. Yeah. Also True. remember the pattern analyzers to keep you in the fight, but with Death Troopers, that pattern analyzer. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it's a hindrance. Not... All of a yeah. sudden. The one the first time is cool, but then you're you're broken. You you can't do yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. A lot of people generally like think whispers have a good matchup into decimators and they can if engineered correctly but the rack that we normally see is a lot of tools to still punish the whispers being around them interesting well we better keep it moving here uh because we got a couple more to go through uh this one's called unsaved squadron uh who is our uh, who I'll is our... I know our next one the list. Uh, the, the name is Chung Chung. <laughs> I don't know if that is the same as what you see. Can you, yeah. Can you tell me uh, uh, their Placement position? is 24. Uh, he, he goes by Max, and yeah, that's his Christian name or whatever. <laughs> his government name. <laughs> Max. Alright. Yeah, so Max flew um, Major Von Reg with uh, Lone Wolf Marksmanship Magpulse and the Power Cells Commander Malrus with Magpulse uh, Lieutenant Gaelic with Heavy Laser Cannon and Proud Tradition Kylo with the Pattern Analyzer version so the same one as um, the one we just talked about and the Hughes which is the same loadout also that um, all the other people have been using it it, it seems like there's there's a handful of tools that people are using. One of the things that are blatantly missing from these three, at least, maybe we'll see them in the, in the next ones, are the uh, three-point guys. The, um, uh, what are they? The um, DT and Scorch, the three yeah, die UFOs. Go. Yeah, the DT and Scorch are mm -hmm. missing, but that's, you know, people are going for Gaelic above those two guys which you know sometimes you, you see them with the heavy laser cannon in this case uh this case with heavy laser cannon sometimes with the ion um cannon but uh yeah it's uh it's again using the same tools that that other people have been using just to taste i guess just pick right. pick the five ships that you like to taste and it seems to be yeah. pretty consistent. So uh, it it I'll... seems Major Von Reg yeah. is the uh, the uh, a question for most people. Uh, they want to, they're either leaning hard into Von Reg or uh, they uh, basically bring don't bring him at all as their five pointer. Uh, what was the other one? It was Wraith is the other one, or Wrath or whatever. I was yeah, here. so you get you get. Wrath, you get this, or sometimes you get. You haven't seen them, but sometimes like people will bite up to Hollow or, or oh. one of these silencers. Sure. But yeah. But uh, yeah, I, mean, I think Major Bond like is the tools. best choice right now because mostly because of the Magpuls. It's uh, Magpuls at I six right now is the is the best tool against the yeah. uh, against Gina. I mean, you don't want to get mm. the proton torpedo, you know, with with all the works just. Mm. Um, uh, a quick mag pulse kind of takes care of that. Yeah, this Von Reg with Lone Wolf seems to. Uh, what do I say? It, it's one of those ships where it's just like you get that whole third of the board, dude. Like, go hold it down. Whatever objective's over there. If there's a single ship over there, you could fight it. Just hit it with your mag pulse. Call it good. Uh, so that's uh, definitely a role Von Reg can take as that, that maneuverable I 6. Again, and power cells on Von Reg. People are really leaning into uh, the the extra shields and health on him. Power cells is a pretty nice tool on him, because Von Reg has a really good way of disengaging uh, via the one hard barrel, then boost, just be out of out of shots at I six, mm -hmm. and then just come back in with an extra shield the next turn by doing another one hard that has to like they can get you back on target pretty quickly in a, in a, in a really tight spot. Um, in terms of uh, Max's matchups, uh, we see uh, kind of a 
pretty decent spread. Didn't face resistance though at all. Um, ended up facing opposed two opposing FOs, one of which we know uh Fruitcake Bat, our first FO list, beat him in round seven. But his first uh win was round one against another FO that brought us eye shuttle and an FO bomber. So very experimental. Um uh, round two loss against 2BX uh, Rebel Thai A Wing would go on to beat a four TIE Bomber Rack, then beat a three TIE Bomber, three TIE Fighter Empire, would beat a Scum Hodgepodge ish of a Seek, a uh, Hawk, which I assume is Dace, a Rogue a Manaru, I assume, and a Y-Wing. This might be the same FO list we saw as Sith Taker that did well, that went undefeated in Swiss. Um, Then lost to... No, won against Jendon Rack 2 Bombers. So we have last Kester, who lost the Jendon Rack 2 Bomber, but then we have Max beating it. Um, Obviously, Triple Whisper versus not Triple Whisper, right? Then when you have Matt, when you have Bonreg at I6 being able to snipe back with a mag pulse yeah. against Rack is a lot easier to pull that reinforce off and reduce its offensive output. Um, and then would win 8 9 and basically uh, win 8 versus an Empire list. Looks like Vader, Soon Tier, Tomax, Scythe 6, probably, and Lareer, if that all fits. I think that does. That sounds about right. Uh, would win against uh, Bodica, Fen, Luke, Hull, Aachen, and Keo. And then in a win and in, his final loss came in round 10. Very sad. Um, but lost to a Falcon, uh, a Fang, Hull, Aachen, I assume, Sabine, Ty, and Keo. So probably a Falcon, Fen, Rao. Sabine, Ty, Hallock, and Akio. So by or Gammer. Lando. But yeah, probably Lando, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it, I think we did see, was it a Lando Bistan in cut, right? That was probably yeah. one of the ones. That was probably, that was probably who got in <laughs> from. Uh, that actually, uh, that makes sense. Because Lando was in yep. the cut, so. Uh, as our only Rebel Falcon. It's a breakdown of Max's matchups. Um, I don't think there's really any consistency to the losses. Let me double check the rounds. So, lost in uh, 2, 7, and 10. So, that's Scramble, Assault, Salvage. No consistent uh, scenario there. Obviously, different lists within each of those. So. Probably any other notes on Max, aka Chung Chung. We can move on to Marcin by check. Yeah. Uh, Marcin yeah. was ranked 25. 25. I'll put a little note right here. after. Chung yeah, Chung. This, I mean, this is why we're taking a look at him. I was like, why? Where, where'd all the FO go? And just outside the cut. Uh, unsurprising here. 5-5-4-3-3. Uh, five, five, three, three. This time decides to do the swarm tactics with quick draw to bump up. Uh, quick draws the five pointer, the other five pointer. That's not Kylo. Uh, uses swarm tactics and targeting synchronizer to get whirlwind to shoot those cluster missiles at I six and get all the fancy things with your advanced optics uh, and all the all the focus tokens. So this one also. Uh, takes cluster missile on Malaris. So looking at a potential seven attacks. Uh eight, eight if you attack. If from quick draw, that's right. Yeah. That's an opening round of shots. Yeah, Let eight attacks you. and one, two, three, four well, one, two, three, four happening at initiative six. Yeah. Um and then potentially, yeah. yeah, potentially or even five, depending on and then the rest are also initiative five. So uh, all of your shots coming in at I five or higher, as long as you're keeping world wind close to quick draw. Yeah, it obviously wasn't Marcin, but uh, well, it might have been. But either way, 
Uh, we saw a quick draw on stream, and they took a shot, and it only knocked off one shield. Okay, it was like the opening shot for the opponent. And quick draw elected not to flip their charge and do a bonus attack, and we're like, "What are you doing? Like, why would you? Like, why would you take a shield and not do a bonus attack?" And that's because. The second attack came in on Quick Draw, because obviously Focus Fire, pretty smart, especially against Quick Draw, who only took a target lock, right? So the second attack comes in, knocks off the other two shields, and then they flip the bonus attack charge, uh, because then they have access to Fanatical to double modify the follow up or the, their bonus attack. I thought that was really interesting. I never had considered saving well, your bonus attack, but if you expect to that, lose all your shields at once. Yeah, because I, I, I probably don't think, I, I mean, you'd have to ask them, but I would probably not think that it's with the hope of shooting later with Fanatical. Uh, because I think if I'm playing Quick Draw and I'm in that scenario where there's focus fire on it, by holding onto that charge you, and you're only losing one shield, hmm. you're hopefully discouraging them from continuing to shoot at him because then he sure. will, he still has that in his back pocket. So it's like, right. uh, I'm not, same thing like if you're shooting Dengar um, and you try to shoot him with the ship that you prefer him to shoot you yeah. with. And, and it, it says like, nope, I'm not shooting you back. Uh, a lot of the time is you're passing that up because you don't want, you know, because once once he once you spend that charge, like the floodgates are open. It's like okay, charge spent. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll kill That's it. That's right. You know. That's right. So it could have been. It it could have also been a defensive, um, uh, bluff. Not a bluff, but like like a defensive thing that just mm -hmm. didn't, you know, that the opponent didn't didn't fall for. Maybe. Uh, it's just uh, an interesting take, but we've seen this targeting synchronizer whirlwind or swarm tactics targeting synchronizer on quick draw plus whirlwind uh, quite a bit ever since quick draw got bumped down to five points. It can fit beautifully in these five, five, four, three, three squads. Uh, obviously, you still have Malaris, Midnight, your heavy hitters at three. Again, uh, Marcin here does not take scorching dt prefers the higher initiative even though uh, i mean malaris is fo just flying 17 point lists plus malaris i mean kind of yeah it i don't think yeah, it's I mean, why because, would it be? like i think you still got to make your list decision based on which kylo you're taking first that'll kind of drastically change your list composition mm -hmm. And then after that, if it happens to be Whisper Kylo, then like the other five would be probably the next choice you make. And then just right. it, because of how sort of restricted FO is on the building aspect of it, do you go the, the standard fill out of four, three, three, where one of the threes is going to be Malrus, which is why that just slots into your point of it being 17. Or do you go um, two other fives and make it five, 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 five? Or fives, which is has not very common and hasn't really netted a ton of great success anyway. So it Malrus is probably there. I yeah, I, I don't see a scenario where you don't take Malrus. Um, it's not initiative in, five. Not with uh, objectives great, of in yeah, the great game objectives. Right now. Initiative five and a missile. Um, and it's a three pointer. So by the time he's gone and burnt what? through his two charges and whatever ordinance he's got, by that point he's he's just a tie fighter collecting points. Uh, I, I want to know about uh, Marson's uh, loss. What took them out of the running? Because uh, we we should probably we got uh, what uh, three more of these. We're gonna uh, bust through. Uh, so we have a loss in round three, six, and eight, which is chance, scramble, and chance. So the first two of the same being chance. Okay. Uh, those came to. Jeremy Chambly in round three with the Jen and Rack double bomber, which, mm. funny enough, um, Marson would come back the immediate game after and face Nathan ID with the exact same list and win. Yeah, which, uh, learn from your mistakes. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Got a practice match in. 
round three was chance, round four was assault. So he lost the chance matchup against the rack, but won the assault against rack, which sounds mm. weird, but it is notable to remember that uh, Jeremy Chambly's list only has four ships. Right. The FL list has five, and there is mm. a potential chance that, uh, you know, some of the uh, road roll timings worked in Marson's favor for, say, of Kylo moving in to jam Helmax. He doesn't have the, the plasma to go off, so some things can change that match. And obviously, you said learn from the one you just lost from, instantly figured out maybe some options to change the approach. Right. Uh, the second loss was against uh, the aforementioned Fruitcake Bat, a.k.a. Greg, in the FO versus FO matchup. That was the round six uh, scramble loss, uh, which kind of makes sense because uh, I believe Fruitcake Bat had Von Reg, and it's in scramble. So Von Reg has great ways to do chassis ability and then claim and still be able to be effective. Um and then also had, I think they both these lists had Midnight, right? Yes, they both had Midnight. Yeah. So they both had an I6, but um, for Cape out of two of them. Uh, and then his other loss came in round eight uh, to Ken, who was running the Fen, Bodica, Keo, Hullock, and Luke Skywalker in Rebel. So he got his third loss in round eight and just played out the rest of his games to beat uh, Rathos and Zach Bart. So pretty, still some pretty tough opponents in the last two. Albeit, I think there might have been a few players who found out as the game as the time went on that once you get your third loss, you're very likely out of it. So don't know how many of them got a little more lax with it. Not to take away the victories, like good wins, right? Great players, but I think the competitive feel and level probably drops off once you get your third loss and gets into a little more like fun play x-wing mode a little bit. <laughs> sure still uh made all the way to the 25th they yep. uh all of these first order players really finished also strong didn't play any resistance at all really this purely just played against other first order empire and rebel played against no um uh republic either literally just p played against three factions out of 10 rounds First Order, Empire, and Rebel. Marson had a very narrow focused up. Uh, opponent pool. Uh, I heard it. Every, every day I'm shuffling. There is, there, there is someone in our Discord channel right now that has dropped by, hasn't been here for a Hello. long time. Uh, can can you hear me now? Is this working? I now? can hear him. Uh oh. Oh no, I can only hear him once. No, I think it's because he's on the ninja. He's not muted. Oh, that's right. I've muted my ninja. Is, is that is this better now? One audio now. All right, so we're going over we're going over words lists. Uh, we're going over the first order. Yeah, uh, we, we we went over the former. one the one scum list that made cut and did a little bit more of a deep dive of his matchups, how things went, the list overall, and now we're going through first order that didn't make the cut and trying to look at the list that were all seven zero and three that were just barely missing the cut and maybe their paths, what they lost to, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I was I, I snuck away. Uh, Dev, you know, I, I I was allowed out of the composing dungeon. Um, and, uh, I figured, I figured I'd just come and say hi real quick. Cause I was listening. You missed out on the Sherpa card. It was pretty exciting. True. Oh, that's a new card, right? Oh yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. hopefully you can stay for, with us for a while here. I mean, I hope so. I hope you do. It's my grandma's birthday. So it's her, you know, happy birthday, grandma. Happy birthday, grandma. <laughs> Well, uh, I think we are about to move on to our next list here. Let me see what we got pulled up. Oh, we're on to Jack Johnson. Uh, okay, Jack Johnson. Which was placement number 26. Wow. 
these are really in order, it seems like. I told you, they're all in. It. So, Dion, the funny thing was, all these FL lists that barely... Well, you're spot, muted. I'm not muted at all. Oh, well, it was muted. I probably, I probably muted a little bit there, but... So, all these FL lists that barely missed cut were within uh-huh. placement 21 to 31. Um, <sighs> after, after 31, the next FO list that shows up in the rankings is until 65. It's a really weird specific congregation of where they landed. Not making cut, but being like just out of it. Okay. So it's the people who practice and the people who didn't. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I basically just hold on, wow. hold on. I, I know who the players are. I'm not calling are. anybody out. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just messing around. I don't know. I don't know. Because <laughs> uh I know at sixty five was uh Mr. Mm-hmm. Martin Shivers who top forward at Sith Taker. And okay. the, the immediate next FO list after that was Pierre Bouffier, who, no, who was number one in Swiss overall at Worlds yeah. last year. So that's good. that's good. That's a good player. Very good player. Good. Yeah. My statements are retracted. <laughs> uh, so you got Jack Johnson's list up? Yes. yes. All right. Do you want to read it, Dion? I got it. Here we go. So we got the tie silencer, Kylo Ren. Uh, ooh, Silencer. That's a thick one. So, uh, we got Malice, Sensor Scrambler, Outmaneuver, Plasma Torpedoes. Then we have, in the Thai BA, Major Von Reg, Lone Wolf for those re-rolls, as long as you got nobody at range 0-2. to two. Marksmanship, Mag Pulse Warheads for some crits. Deuterium Power Cells for some potential regen. Also, we got Hollow in the BA as well. Proud Tradition, classic. With Deuterium Power Cells and Mag Pulse Warheads, and then capping it off with Commander Malrus in the FO, and not with Cluster Missiles, which a lot of people like to go with Malrus. This is uh, another Mag Pulse Warhead, really leaning into that salvage, it would seem. Yeah, triple Mag Pulse. Just I'm gonna de- I'm gonna neuter everything you have for as long as possible for Kylo to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> basically. Uh, funny thing is. Yeah. Crispy was flying this exact version up until about a month before Worlds, or basically when Endor came out. He also really liked the outmaneuver plasma torp with Mal with Malice. Like, just if you get behind, if you get out of arc of someone, that plasma torp hurts a ton uh, because of the minus agility. But uh, Crispy ended up swapping to the more Doug Howe version with the instinctive proton torpedo. Uh, keeping Lone Wolf on Bondrag and going Predator on Kylo instead with advanced optics. Uh, we'll it's, see that it, version of Doug's uh, silencer later. Well, that seems like a different, like a different approach, right? There's the the sneaky, sneaky version of Kylo versus I want to punch you in the face. Kind of what it sounds like. Yeah, the one that one that wants to get around you to do the big damage, and the other one that like, I, if you show up in my arc, I'm just gonna throw four dice no matter what, whether it's range one or range two to three. Uh, but yeah. that hollow will call on your name. I know a hollow uh, <laughs> makes it in here. Uh, hollow and Mallers just paired together so well. Throwing strain at Mallers while they have their ability active really messes with target priority because they your opponent obviously wants to shoot a strange ship. Uh, and especially in this list where Mallers is your tank, uh, this is really triple ace plus uh between uh the two bas and the silencer here so uh that is very interesting to me plus as well you have the double deuterium power cells always great to see hollow and von reg both take the weapons disabled for a shield and then hollow slings that disabled over to von reg uh so that they can still fire while that shift does obviously the second one doesn't do anything more than the first one did so a lot of cool things you could do with hollow there love to see uh them combined no no pattern analyzer but maybe if you're running just a triple ace plus list like this you do need to lean in and have more health because you know at some point they're going to find you and do damage to you so you need to be able to I uh, have a way to counter that, and uh, these BAs are leading into uh, some extra shields. Uh, what about their what about their losses here for Jack Johnson? What uh, what eventually took them out? 
it it looked very good as the as the two days progressed. His first loss wasn't until round five against Brendan Edwards, um, which wow. round five was salvage playing against a empire list, which looks to be uh, Vader, Merrick, I would assume Tomex and Deathfire and either Faroff or Vizier in the Reaper. So six, four, four, three, three. Um, I mean, if you're facing Vader with in salvage that and and if it, and if that other uh, X one is Merrick, it could have been Juno as well. I guess we'll just click the thing or find out. But either way, that's gonna be rough to hold on to boxes. And as we talked about in our game plan against FO, especially when it's just those four FO ships, you don't have that fifth one to help hang around a box. Mauris is probably mm -hmm. the only one holding a box in that game and just hoping to hold on to it long enough. Uh, and then. Won every other game until losing both round nine and ten. So went into Ugh. round nine being seven and one, only having Ugh. to win one more game to guarantee big, themselves in the top sixteen. Big sad. Uh, yeah, that's very big sad. sad. Um, but I mean, you go you so, go from just being on top of the world, to like, I got it. You that lose seven the first and one, one high now the pressure's Ugh. on. Yeah, well, round nine was against a triple. It was against Molfar with the triple Arc One Seventy Republic with a Torrent, a Z, and a Y Wing in Assault. So, good luck. It's it's going to be rough because it's Assault against triple Arc. And then his round ten was against another Republic list. This time featuring double Arc Mace Two Z Y, which I think we got that one on stream too in Top Cut. Will I think that was uh, uh, Mace? Yeah. Yeah, that was against Jeremy Chambly, right? The mm -hmm. Mace ended up height of perception uh, oh, killing yeah. Jendon, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, destroyed um, his ship. That... He, he ejection pod out, as always, but did destroy his ship. Yeah. Um, but that round 10 was in salvage. So with all those mag pulses, have a decent chance of knocking boxes off, but it's hard to tell all of those ships to uh, have less you know minus that that attack power and jamming with the mag pulse especially mace in that matchup actually comes in pretty clutch with heightened perception potentially guaranteeing a better shot mm -hmm. at i7 instead of and shooting before some of those other ships in the fo squad um so it was looking pretty good uh looks like they mostly fa their face three republic uh two of them were lost at the end based only one rebel with four T-65s and a TIE Fighter. Not a comp I'm used to seeing. Um, ended up facing one resistance. Maui. I, I, I met Maui for the first time. And he legit went for the Maui look. Like, from <laughs> wow. from Moana, went like... Ma not not no shirt, but like had a... Uh, I, I'd say tribal, I guess, looking shirt. He, he, he went with the gimmick, I would say. Um, and then also... Uh, faced off against Joel Killingsworth, too, and beat him, who had uh, Vader's soon tier triple bomber. Uh, he beat Doug Howe in round seven. He beat Jonathan Grasser in round eight. He faced some pretty high-quality players across his day. So uh, I, it's rough for Jack Johnson to lose his last two to not make cut, but I don't think he's got... I mean, it's rough you didn't make cut, but I think performance-wise, I would be pretty proud of you if, if i was told after the event i would go through all that and beat the players i would have defeated in the matchups and whatnot yeah it's tough i feel like round nine got to a lot of players here it seems like the, again that that assault especially when you only have uh limited ships oh just i mean once we get to the final comp uh compilation of what rounds hurt these players the most? There are definitely two rounds that took out uh, most of these players, and actually one round that took out none of these FO players. Just a quick shout out, Lambolo, dropping fifteen subs in the chat. Had to had to make sure we give him a little. Oh shout dang, out there. Lambolo, Thank always you. getting our back, helping us out. A grand a grand admiral page. I blame Dion. It's Dion's fault. He showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, that's, soothing that's awesome. voice. I, I have <laughs> I, I have literally one minute left on my on my dungeon time. Well, but uh I'll, you... I'll be I'll be I'll be around. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Well, I mean, like I said, glad to have you, Dion. Good hearing your voice. Great seeing you over the world's weekend. Uh, but if you got to go, you got to go. We, we understand. I, I got my Dion hug. I was happy. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we are moving in to Fan Long again. Long Long. Long Long. Uh, uh, this is. Placement, placement 30. Uh, this looks very familiar. It's uh, it is the same list as the like three or four rounds ago, right? Yep, it's the Quick same list as Mars like and four... Jack. Yeah, so yeah, it's exactly the same list. So it's the Quick Draw with Swarm Tactics and Fanatical Fire Control System, the Commander Maul Risk with Cluster Missiles, Midnight Crack Shot and Predator, Whirlwind getting boosted up with the Advanced Optics and Cluster Missiles. And again, the advanced optics and cluster missiles with with Whirlwind is is just um, is just pretty insane. I mean, that's that's really good. Uh, being able to just double take two shots and essentially double modify both of them in in, in a lot of situations. Um, real quick question uh, though, with with the proud tradition and the whispers, do they get to jam after that proud tradition, no. or is it? They're already no, stressed, they right? it, it is yeah. a risky endeavor. Well, both ways. If they if they K turn and mm -hmm. use the proud side, they do not get it. It's not discount pattern analyzer. You but take then your their focus. focus has become. But if it's it ever flipped, yeah. which is rare, but if it's ever mm -hmm. flipped, uh, it's actually why I don't run the uh, proud tradition on whispers because if someone ever flipped it. You lose out on your best action of your entire action bar, which is focus, linked, jam. And yep. focus, rotate yep. as well. Well, you lose out on both yeah, your, you... your things. Yeah, you can't focus into anything after that point because then all your focus actions are red. So that is a rough spot. But yeah, this is a... So, and you talk about how the the combination and how good that whirlwind can be when paired next to that swarm tactics quick draw. Uh, in my world's prep game, I played Martin Shivers, uh, who also played this exact list in worlds. And I had a situation where I had to put Jess down before uh, his whirlwind, so you get to place whirlwind after. And obviously, stuff wants to be next to Jess. So I put Jess down. Uh, he obviously kind of put Whirlwind across. I'm like, all right, Quick Draw is going to be somewhere near there. I'm just not going to put anyone near Jess. I'm going to ignore Jess's ability completely and just go put myself somewhere else. <laughs> and it kind of worked. So sometimes, no matter how much you want to have your ships close up to each other, it's not worth into opting into allowing that that combination to be engineered so easily. Um, in terms of our uh, wins losses here, this one's a little more spread out here. Fon Longlon losing his first round to Brett Freeman, unfortunately. Um, against the Rebel list, looks like probably Wedge, Luke, Fen Rao, uh, Spin Tai, and Keo would win next against Empire, would then lose the round three against a double arc uh, Aether Sprite, I assume Anakin SOC, and a Z95, probably Mace, I would assume. We are used to seeing the um, the Ada, Ada two arc. Usually there's a third arc plus of another four-point ship being the Padme version. This one shifts the points around. Might actually be something a little more expensive, or uh, because if you go to a five point thing, your your three point option should be available. But opted for a Z ninety five, which could be a three pointer, a stub, or a killer, or it could be a six point seven B, or even a five point eight instead of a four point eight. Um, either way, so loss within the first three rounds could be really rough for any player. Uh, Fawn would go on to win every single game up to round. 10 his final loss came in round 10 he crawled all his way back to potentially make cut in the win and in game and uh jeremy chambly ended up pulling out the victory with the jen and rack double bomber wow hmm. 
What do you think? I, what what gives a four ship empire list uh, the advantage here? Is it that gen I mean, is you... really scary to any whisper? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's like, fair. If that proton can is shooting at a whisper and it gets to keep a green token because it only had to like lock mod and the soft yeah. focus mod for the proton cannon sure. a, any whisper is deathly terrified at that point yeah five dice and it's probably happening uh the first engagement before you're close enough to put your your gems on them mm -hmm. yeah that could be very easily a dead uh whisper in in one round and depending I mean, on road, right? There's a plasma coming from Tomax, maybe. There's Vader crew from Rack. There's a Deathfire bomb. Mm. So there's a lot of things to navigate, not letting chip damage show up on top of the proton cannon incoming from Jet. Um, Fawn did end up playing round nine against our previous former world champion Nicholas God, who was probably who within the same bracket, Nicholas God would have gotten his third loss in round nine. Uh, to note, Nicholas God was running uh, 2X, 2B, and Sabine Ties, so probably the custom Gina, the um, uh, BOE, Braylon, Sabine, BOE Wedge, and uh, Yavin. Yeah, that checks out. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Man, going... Uh... All the way. What was the round eight and nine, or sorry, round nine and ten objectives again? Assault and uh, assault and chance. No, salvage. Nine assault, salvage. ten salvage. Um, interesting. One one interesting note. So Fawn is one of the few FO players out of this group that we're talking about here that didn't play another single FO faction. He didn't play hmm. a faction battle. Uh, he just had a breakdown of three rebel, one, two, three empire, and two, no, four empire, two uh, republic, and one resistance. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, we got one more uh, before we get out of here for the night. And that's, of course, number 31, our boy, Doug. Doug, 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 Doug. Team, Team America, Doug. 31, you said. Yep, 31. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the same list they ran at uh, the Las Vegas Open, which, of course, they won. Kylo Silencer with Instinctive, Lone Wolf, Advanced Optics, Proton. Uh, so it does need a lock and uh, triple modifies their Proton Torpedo without a lock, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Proud, Heavy, Gaelic, uh, Magpulse, Malarus, Barrage Rockets on Lahuse, and for the first time, a non I, uh, I5 or I6. Uh, three pointer here, DT seven nine eight with deuterium power cells doing fake scorch or uh, a five health three point three agility ship. Wow, we need a second objective carrier, maybe the thing with <laughs> five health uh, on three agility. Uh, but yeah, uh, obviously, we've seen a lot of this if you watched uh, Las Vegas open. Doug's been doing so great with this. Uh, this is also his XTC list he flew last year to great success. Uh, so he knows it up and down. But where where did he find his struggles in the event, Ryan? So he had a very similar look as Fawn Longalon, the uh, gentleman we just talked about in the last uh, player for FO. Lost round one to a resistance. Looks like probably Poe Falcon, Nine Nub, uh, Elo Snap would be my guess. Sure. It's basically po it was Falcon plus Triple T70. It could have been Ray as well, I guess, not just Poe. Um, and then would we'll go on to win all the way up to round seven. Would beat a Scum, two Rebel, a Republic, and another First Order. Um, 
and then would lose, as aforementioned Jack Johnson, uh, who also was probably one of the only other Kylo Silencer players right there. So two of the Kylo Silencer players played each other. Um, and why? then would beat... Yeah, why? why? <laughs> Just let us play other people. <laughs> um, would win round eight against Alex Farley, uh, last year top cut player. Um, Alex was running a Empire, looks like Rack, uh, Tomax, Deathfire, Faroff, or Vizier, and the rear. Uh, would win against the Republic. And then would lose round 10. Again, another win and in opportunity against Octor Khan running the Ben, Keo, Luke, Wedge, Sabine, TIE Fighter. Again, that final round being a salvage. Wow. So. I obviously um, played against a lot of good players, but. Yeah, another. Interesting. I'll say it was it, it was very hard to avoid good players at Worlds if you made day two. Well, that's that's fair. Uh, going to be honest with you, yeah. Uh, this is how she goes. <laughs> but the uh, Octo is flying new wedge, but no B wings. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, I think that was the other common rebel list was going for the Fen Fang Luke from Yavin, Endor Wedge, and then you have five points left okay. to slot in some of the two best low-cost ships in the game, being Sabine TIE Fighter and Keo a Right. And maybe that... So I definitely could see that as a factor. Two I-6s out there against uh, Doug's only I-5 squad. Yep. He, he did say, leading up to Worlds, he was practicing, he was getting a little concerned of some of the other I-6... Uh, right. Things coming from Endor, whether it was mm -hmm. Jendin or Soon Tier or Wedge, especially. Right. Wedge Wedge shows up with the Dalmat APT, can make anything on Doug's side of the board either uh really scared or even one shot range, right? Like you'll get any of those tie FOs if they take any chip damage, they would need max amount of uh paint results on defense if he has a focus to even survive let alone maybe you have a chance to get one shot or put Kylo in really serious danger. So um, it looked like Doug's path. He didn't fight any Jendons. Uh, his only I-6s that he had to end up fighting were of, of the Rebel, uh, or at least newer I-6s. Again, there's the, he, there's a chance he lost to a Poe Falcon instead of a Ray Falcon in round one. Yeah. Um, probably fought at least... It uh, looks like he fought someone else in round four. Brought this, it looks like to be close to, if not the same list as Octor Khan brought in round ten. So it's not like he didn't face any I sixes. There's a Von Reg he faced in there as well, uh, from okay. another FO. So there was a mix. Uh, I know Milkman, aka find his name. He's he's an NCX. He's the uh, captain of the Mega Milk team. Uh, he was running seven B Anakin, which could be really difficult mm -hmm. to deal with for Kylo too cuz he's just as maneuverable. So but yeah, another uh almost made it uh didn't win round 10 situation which if we transition to what were the most detrimental rounds for all these FO players um and what was the least detrimental round. Uh all of these FO lists won round 4. Not a single one of them lost round 4 and that's assault by the way which we talked really? about may not have been their their best scenario. But all these FO lists won round four. Um, now the, the killer, the killers were both salvage rounds. Salvage in round five claimed uh, Fruitcake Bat, Kester, Jack Johnson, and Doug Howe. And then round 10 claimed... Max, a.k.a. Chung Chung, Jack Johnson, Fawn Longalon, and Doug Howe. So Salvage was the killer for these FO lists, which sounds weird because we always think like, oh, they have crit mechanics via the mag pulses around. They have solid carry. They have at least one solid carrier with Malrus, but maybe not more than Malrus as a solid carrier. Um... But yeah, 
that that's that's the patterns i noticed every other round there was only two players that lost but round four all of them won round five four of them lost and round ten four of them lost those were the two killers the the end of both days maybe too much too much brain power in those early rounds was used on flying those fo lists that it was just too much to handle by round five of each day i can believe it uh, I was just poking through uh, some of our insights here. Uh, the unsurprisingly, eighty percent had a whisper, and a hundred percent of FO list had the tie FO. It is the kind of their signature ship. The so. Malris. How many of them didn't have Malris? Uh, just the. Uh, you can actually find that out. No, even. Even uh, the one we looked at that had the four ship that broke the moat went seven five five three. Even there was one, one list. list. There was at least one list Mowers wasn't in because looking at the numbers, it's Mowers's frequency or how often they were in an FO list in the pilot section was at ninety seven point five percent. So there was at least one FO list that didn't bring Mowers. What's the chances they just don't have a list? <laughs> I guess. What, are you are you still first order? I guess it does. I don't know if it knows if you're first order if you don't have a list in there. But yeah, I did first order by count and pilots, and I've also in the composition section did first order by count. And the composition is kind of interesting to look at too because you can see, like, what are the ones that have a a higher percentile, the ones closer to that top cut and. That composition in, in rank spot number two at that 65.43% percentile, and that was the third spot at 59.29%. Um, when you filter by, by count for first order, I guess. Um, because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of varying lists, I will say. Uh, the most common list was only brought seven times in first order. I'm assuming that's the Von Reg. Wylo, Malris, Lacuse, and probably Midnight. A lot of people opted into Midnight. As you said, there wasn't sure. a lot of DT or Scorches. No, they got, they so that was the most popular them. list archetype. But uh, it looks like the most successful list archetype with a decent amount of numbers, not being one of or two of a list, was actually the the uh, the Swarm Tactics Quick Draw uh, Whisper, uh, or the, the Whirlwind one. Mm -hmm. that showed up six times and had an average placement of around 35th because basically you take the percentile uh take the number 100 subtract the percentile which is 65.43 i'll just round it to say it's 65 so 100 minus 65 is 35 so the average placement of that list in this event was 35th which much closer than a lot of the other percentiles being taken at that count rate. Like, still a six counts low, but this is only in one single event. Sure. Technically, if we look at all first order and filter by percentile, best performing one was Kester Smith's Triple Whisper. Uh, but it's only one of, right? Like only The only one. person who brought it. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the second best was the Kylo Silencer Malaris Hollow Von Reg, which was brought by Jack Johnson and I know Crispy. They just had varying upgrades on that Kylo Silencer. Um, right. We know, I think, if I recall, Crispy he ended up, uh, I think, six and four. So still day two winning record, high percentile. Yeah, that is that is so interesting. I mean, because we. To be able to just take a snapshot at the uh, the top sixteen, and be like, "Oh, FO is trash. They didn't even get they didn't even get into the top 16. But yet to there see them, were, there was at least one, two, three, four, five, six. six out of the seven lists we just got done talking about got their final losses in either round oh no sorry 
five out of the seven that we talked about got their final losses in round nine or ten. Most of these were in it till almost the very end. <laughs> and the people who didn't lose in round nine or ten lost in either a large chunk where Kester Smith did five, six, seven in a row where he started four and oh, or uh, Marson who was uh, didn't only lost in six around six and eight. So hmm. not very few of these players lost early. And if they did like Fawn Longline did around one and three, he made it all the way to the potential winning in round 10 and just lost it there. Couple of lot, lots of heartbreak in first order right now. Hearts crushed all seems, over the, the, the seems, under the Supreme leader. It seems like it. Marcel, why do you, why do you think that is? Why do you think they, uh, why they couldn't cross the finish line, if you will. Um, I I just think it's it's um it takes it takes a lot of luck. I mean, things have to fall into place. Even you know the 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 two winners or the two finalists had to go through a road rule and just Sunday alone. So uh, honestly, it's just it's just a lot of luck. Now, if you were talking about like glaring weaknesses i think one of the terrible matchups which crispy says is not a bad matchup for his specifically but i think in general it's one of, one of the terrible matchups for uh them is the assault against three arcs it's just i know, mean probably just not even assault yeah. just three arcs in general well three arcs in general but specifically assault because even with the other ones you you've got like uh you know, um, you've got pieces that can go and press buttons and still have, like, some type of modifier, whether it's Lone Wolf or or that free target lock from, you know, from moving. So there, there's there's ways to... I think chance, engage, chance engagement is probably their strongest just because they are very defensive and they, they hold on to their points uh, well as aces. And but yeah, but assault like that. I mean, you you've got four or five ships. They're all small base, and it's not like you can't be cagey. You can't press. You know, you you've got to stick around. And the arcs and the rest of the squads like they know where to point. Like you're gonna be somewhere right there. Yeah, and I, it's I will real know. Easy to just get get in the hole like in the first two three rounds and be down you know like three three to, i mean like four to one or something like that just with with the assault objectives you were saying right yeah i will know so assault uh while i said round four none of these fo lists lost which was assault but also in the other two rounds of assault during worlds um hester lost round seven Chung Chung, AK Max, lost round seven. And in round nine, Root Cake Bad AK Greg and Jack Johnson lost. So no FO list lost assault twice out of the whole world spent. I think what's key to remember is if you're not facing stuff like Triple Arc, FO really likes to make sure their actions are available to them to be for, used for their own ship offensively mm -hmm. or defensively when they don't have to press buttons or pick up boxes they can enact their plans generally as they need to just with assault they need to shift maybe the vectors or positions where it happens so i think assault may be better for fo than we thought originally because yeah i mean that, I, as... that checks out i mean they very similar to empire where they their actions are so powerful that wait wait quote unquote wasting their actions on scenarios uh, is a lot more detrimental. Uh, it seems like, so then, so yeah, in the future, looking more towards scramble and uh, towing. Yeah, it looks like they're, they're I mean, glaring weakness. By, by the results, salvage was their worst. Assault was their best, and uh, Scramble was the second best, because the only other round two of these players didn't lose 
was round two where only Chung Chung, a.k.a. Max, lost um, in round two for Scramble. Everyone else won that Scramble round two. So there was a... Uh, and obviously we had a, a decent variety in these FO lists, mainly in what what, what type of 5-5-4-3-3 five, five, three, three it was. But as we saw, Doug Howe showing up with his Silencer Kylo Lehue's 3-3-3, and then uh, Jack Johnson running the Hilo Silencer Hollow Von Reg Malrus four ship version. Two outliers for, o- over the the normal five five four three three. Right. Still uh, impressive uh, and fascinating to see uh, why and how so many of these. First order players uh, just just missed it. Uh, a lot of their bubble bursted, if you will, in the final rounds of Swiss. Still, all these players did an excellent job in uh, ten games against these world class competitors. Is a gauntlet of X Wing to go through. So, uh, of who? Uh, it was Greg. Greg ended up being the best FO overall by the narrowest of margins. Uh, so that uh, very, very close SOS score. Um, an SOS of uh, 1.98, so almost a 2 SOS, which is generally pretty high. Um, yeah. Kester Smith barely behind him at 0.8944. Oof. So all these players battling it out, like I said, for that. Because uh, Top FO was a prize. So that's, uh, if, you, if you're wondering why, like, why they play game 10 or why they play the rest of day two or whatever. Uh, other than came to play X-Wing. There was some yeah. something on the line uh, for all of these FO players. But. Well, and again, for most of these, F- I mean, technically, for a majority of these FO players, uh, there were there were four of them that had win in uh, win in, in opportunities in round ten. So really, uh, so we could have had four. It just there was as easily the top... as zero in the top sixteen. Yep. Wow. By when it came to the start of round ten, there was a chance that Chong Chong, aka Max, Jack Johnson, Fon Longalon, and Doug Howe could have all made it in, and we could have had four FOS in the top sixteen and subtract whoever they lost to out. <laughs> Crazy, different timeline. Well, uh, this has been an interesting dive into uh, the results of Worlds. Of course, we're going to be talking about Worlds. We're going to be talking list breaks. We're going to do list breakdowns. Hopefully, we get a bunch of interviews. We're going to talk shop with these players. What got them to the final table? Well, I want to be on the final table. Or in the top four or the top eight or whatever next year. How can I do that? So hopefully we can get some insight on them in the future episodes. Of course, if you're watching or listening later on, we're always here on Monday on Twitch. You can check out uh, the video version of the podcast uh, on YouTube normally later in the week, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday or so. Uh, Wednesday we do stream on Twitch as well and catch me and James hanging out playing some games of X-Wing and uh, of course we are looking to start scheduling the next season but uh, we're waiting uh, obviously a little early for that so we're waiting to hear more information but for now uh, like I said you can check us out on the Twitch or YouTube uh, anything I missed before we round r- 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 <laughs> round up the wagons or whatever early and leave. No, I think I think we're both bedtime mind right now. Bedtime. <laughs> that sounds great. Oh, well, it's been an an exciting journey. Uh, for this podcast, but time is coming to end. So for everybody here at Gold Squadron, stay safe.
Stay smart. Gold Squadron out. Thank you to ISO, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, Row 6, 626, Chief, and J List, our Grand Admiral patrons. And all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members, thank you for your support. Gold Squadron out.